Hello, Micron fans! Welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a three-player game. We're going to be watching Tupeco versus Wraith versus Oladin on Abram's Research Station. Now, Abram's Research Station is a map I don't think I've actually ever really shown in this stream, or shown a couple times, but we'll go over it. So, it's, like I said, a three-player map. You have main bases at the 12 o'clock, the 4 o'clock, and the 8 o'clock positions. You also, between them, have expansions. Fairly small ones, and near the middle as well, you have smaller expansions. So there's a fair amount of economy to go around, but it's fair. It's still kind of tight. The main base is where a lot of people are going to be building up their opening resources. And it's meant to last a while, but not allow for too many resource processors to be built. Relatively speaking, it's still not, say, the Cold Force style, where you only have two or three RPs in the main base, and sorry, two or three crates in the main base, and all the RPs go around that. It's definitely much more filled in. So we see that. The, that Wraith is going out quite quickly with CISO. Tobeko is starting out as Vekir, and Oladin is also CISO. So we have a CISO versus Vekir versus CISO match, and all players look to be going for pretty standard economic openings. Tobeko is going for an early QP. It might be going for a slightly earlier foundation, probably 2 minute 30 second depot. We're at the 145 mark right now, which means you should be seeing that fairly soon, but it's hard to say. He does actually have quite a bit of money in the bank... Oh, well, he has enough money in the bank, he could get a depot fairly soon. And Oladin was when I was actually looking, I was a lot of money in the bank. Just building up economically, as is Wraith. So, no one doing anything particularly eventful yet. Looks like Tupeco appears to be the most confident. He's actually fast forwarding towards the present as he does this, or towards the future as he does this, which is what I'd recommend doing in general. If you're going to macro out, you want to be where you can do it for free. With chrono, At least chrono energy wise, you can do it for free. And that is the future or the present, but the future gives you much more time to go back and change things up if you want to, whereas if you're doing it in the present, then any changes have to cost you chrono energy. Oladin also fast forwarding, and by the way, these are newer players, so that's why I'm going over a bit more of elementary details, because I assume that they're going to be watching this, and they might want to see any tips, any tricks, any comments on what they were doing, how they were playing. But right now, nothing really notable coming on. Both, they're all just doing, well, both CISO players are doing fairly standard economic start, though. Oladin did very early, or earlier than Wraith, get an importer. Not especially early. A bit surprised that now the player has gotten a factory at this point. In fact, I'm quite surprised Wraith hasn't gotten a factory at this point. Well, no, I'm still kind of surprised he hasn't gotten a factory at this point, getting even a couple ATHCs for scouting. None of the players are going for scouting, and that's a little unusual at this stage in the game. Even on a map like Abrams, despite its size, the fact that it's a three-player map, because of the three, it is a three-player map, I would almost expect them to be going for early scouting, because they want to know what's going on. The fact that they aren't is a little bit surprising to me. But no, they are all just building up their economies early on, so I might as well just fast forward to this section, because not a whole lot's going on right now. And, like I said, mostly just building up some Q-Plasma, none of them going for tech quite yet. Ah, here we go. Oladin actually is going for an early factory. Well, not early, but four-minute factory. And Tupeco, unlike what I had initially said, is not going for an early depot. He just is getting a lot of money. Now he's getting a depot at the five-minute mark. And... Might be going very quickly for air from there. You actually might just be if he has an aerial patrol center. I wouldn't be surprised, just given that there was another foundation. Just because he has so much money in the bank right now, that it would not surprise me. I mean, like 200 LC, 260 Q plasma. He's looks like he's in pretty good shape. Oh wait a sec. No, he's that appears to be his economy. Sorry, I, was, I wasn't sure if this is actually correct, but no, it is. it does appear to be correct. He is going for very early air units, and that's exactly where he will be building. Oladin, on the other hand, is getting himself machinery very early on, and this point has not built any additional units. He is going for an expansion very quickly towards the center of the map, and Wraith, at the three-minute mark, two minutes down from both other players, isn't actually doing too much. Actually, at this point as well, we see that Tupeco has already prepared himself to deal with any expansions going towards the north east side of the map, and that's what he just did, so Wraith really doesn't have any way of getting to that expansion. Looks like he's trying to go to the south expansion as well, and that is not well defended, so he could do that. And also getting back to the 4 minute mark, so Wraith right now is the furthest behind. Tupeco appears to be far farther ahead, though his main macro is almost appears to be delayed. It's actually hard to tell. He's just... He th I thought he had more Q-Plasma RPs earlier on. But that may have changed, because he 
had gotten that depot beforehand, but he doesn't have that all that much liquid crystal in the bank right now. So it makes me confused, because I thought... Let's see, from Oladin's point of view... Oh, never mind. Tupeko was building towards the future right now, especially building up to the 7 minute mark, and that's where we were seeing the aerial control center being built up. So we're actually seeing about a minute down from when we saw Tupeko build up his entire base, and Wraith is about two minutes down from there, where he is now, rather. Looks to be actually setting up an expansion towards the south, realizing he can't do it towards the northeast, and keeping that marine at home, I believe. But he is sending one to the south, and will be able to do this successfully. Oladin looks like he might be trying... No, he's not trying to intercept. He is, in fact, going for the center expansion himself. And that's what we saw earlier, which means that is going going well for him, actually. And getting a couple Lancers, I'm actually a little surprised he got machinery as early as he did. I don't see any defense turrets or any tanks or tornadoes being used. Now, at this point, Oladin does have enough money he could start building either, actually. Though, admittedly, at this stage of the game, I still would say probably should go for ATHCs or Lancers. Lancers aren't bad either. Given that... Well, actually... Given that Tupeko is going very quickly for Aerial Control Center, it means he's just going to get air units very quickly, and then that Lancer... The advantage I was about to say about the Lancer over the ATHC, being that Vecchio will typically start with Zion Pulsers, is kind of moot in a three-player game. Especially one where the... Well... Especially one of the maps is this large that the players can really build up pretty quickly before they have to worry about their opponents, especially since none of the players are harassing any of the others. It actually kind of surprises me that none of the players have sent any harassment units. There's a couple Lancers built up for Oladin, but really not much else. I mean, Tupeko hasn't even started to build up any units from his own base. He's just been building up more economy, building up more foundations, getting a second annex. Not a bad idea, but I'm just surprised no one has done any harassment so far. Eight minutes into the game, and none of the players have actually done anything. I mean, eight, eight chronal minutes. Like eight actual real-time minutes, and no one's done anything. To, well, Oladin getting himself a macrofab and getting himself ground units, which means Twin Mars are likely to come up in the near future, while Tupeko continuing to build up his secondary base, but no vehicles coming out of him. None at all. Like I said, very surprising. He's just building up his economy and keeping himself... He's turtling and booming, but not really doing too much else. Wraith also getting a macrofab up. I'm not sure if these players had a no-rush agreement early on, or if they just aren't actually considering the power of harassment, because harassment is extremely powerful. Even in Akron, even with the time travel thing, you can actually go around it. Harassment can still be very powerful, and I'm just surprised. I mean, now we see that there is a tank. Now we see that there's a defense turret for Oladin. But it's still quite surprising that none of the players have actually really tried to deal with any of this. And Tupeko, I'd say, is in the best position right now. He definitely has the strongest economy. He has the most bases. He actually does have now a bunch of vehicles being built up and sending them out at the 11 minute mark over to... Well, possibly... Possibly to Oladin? I mean, Oladin would be the better target right now. Oladin is a bit more of an economy going. But he's not really sending them out at all, actually. He's not even building a whole lot still. He's just continuing to... Well, he's building a few more air vehicles in his main base. But... Now getting Q-Plasma blocked, he could use more Q-Plasma RPs. A little surprising given how much he was booming the rest of the time, though he should probably just move some of these RPs, a couple of these RPs to Q-Plasma, and work from there. So, Tupeko is getting a nice army. Oladin has a very small defense force, harassment force, maybe. He could deal with a few air units, but I think at this point, Tupeko is going to have far more than Oladin can deal with. And Wraith, about two minutes down from all of them, building a bunch of defense turrets around his base, and getting himself... Well, he also has ground units. He's not getting any other tech, but he does need... Oh, getting heavy cruisers very early on. That's interesting, but not especially useful. Heavy cruisers are very powerful on their own, but... Tupeko has so many more units. It's the number, the sheer number of units Tupeko has, especially given that a couple of them are Teth Turchers, which would just tear apart that heavy cruiser, being that their Teth Turchers are anti-air units. That's not going to go well. If Tupeko attacks Wraith, I think Wraith has no chance. If he attacks Oladin, Oladin will be able to defend at least for a little while. He does have a few defense turrets around that would stop early attacking forces. But really, my guess is we're going to see gate tech coming out from Tupeko before it goes for an assault, at which point he can just skip teleport all of his units straight inside of either of his opponent's bases. Now, Wraith, on the other hand, actually does have... He is getting his economy a bit stronger. I think at this point he may have a stronger economy than Oladin. Let's just double-check. He has about five... Now it's four LCRPs in that base, and another six in his mains, that's ten total. Compared to Oladin, about two, even two minutes up, he has... Well, he only has about eight LCRPs, and the QPRPs are about the same. I think Wraith may have a few more. 
And Wraith still isn't building a whole lot of units. He has a fair amount of money in the bank, but isn't building a whole lot with it. Actually, getting another Tornaut, that's not bad. But, like I said, compared to what Tupeco has, and Wraith actually going for early attack against Tupeco, but this is not going to go well. Too many Teth units in play, and they will just tear apart all these air units coming in. Heavy Creatures doing what they can. The Tornaut's doing what it can, but it's not doing enough really on its own. And it goes down very quickly. And is gone. There's nothing that Wraith really could have done there. There's just too many Teth units. He needed to have ground units as well to support that, and I'm a bit surprised he isn't getting race... Or, sorry, not race. He isn't getting... I don't know what game I'm thinking of. He isn't getting Martex. He isn't getting... I don't know, Race in StarCraft. I mean, that's the game I was thinking of, was StarCraft Brood War. I apologize. And no, those are use those would be useless in this case too, even if they did exist in this game. That wouldn't help, because he needs good anti-ground units. He needs tanks. He needs Martanks. That's what I was going to say. It was Twin Mars. That's what he needs. But his name, his username is confusing me. Because Wraith needs Twin Mars, and he's not getting them. Because Twin Mars just tear apart everything here. That would be that'd be the death of this. However, Tobacco is ch checking out, finding Oladin's army at the 12-minute mark, and that is going to not go well for him. Oladin actually, the 13-minute mark looks like he well, he got rid of the infantry. The infantry are clearly going down. The real question is what happens to these air units here, and now these ground units as well, which Wraith does not appear to be willing to attack. He's holding back. He's avoiding going in. Like I said, he's got an entire air force. That's all he has. He really needs to build some ground units. Like, ground units actually work in Akron. I'm not sure what if he was thinking that they would get lost or would get stuck or aren't fast enough, because they are. They w they really are, and especially if he gets gate tech, which he could afford. Actually, as of... Yeah, 30 minute arc, he could afford gate tech, and I think he's saving up for gate tech. I believe that's what he's doing, but we'll find out. He's jumping towards the future, and I expect gate tech to be researched now, if not sooner. But I don't see that happening. Much to my surprise, actually. He might be going to the earliest time trying to figure out when it's actually affordable. No, just building another frigate, possibly building more units. I'm not sure what he is planning on doing. No, he's getting aerospace. He's not getting gate tech. I don't understand why. I mean, I can see maybe he's trying to get slightly stronger tornads and slightly stronger lancers. But he doesn't need air units. He doesn't need his air units to be strong. I mean, he can go over this mountain here and harass, but these ground units here are going to destroy his air. That's... they're anti-air ground units. They're just... And he he's not using anti-ground air units yet for the Tornads, and the Tornads are not going to be fast enough. And a larger battle being waged between Tobacco and Oladim, and Oladim able to take apart everything that Tobacco has. And Tobacco managing to try to do what he can with his infantry after the fight, but at this point it looks like Tobacco is not even going for it. Just going to let Oladim take the Northwest expansion. So both... Ol well, actually, I think all the players really have set up their expansions pretty securely. And Wraith, once again, trying to take this expansion away from Tupeco, the northeast. As Tupeco apparently still continues to go for that attack, he's not giving up on this. And he's not going to win it either. I mean, the forces he has coming in aren't going to be enough. And at the same time, like I said, Wraith is coming in around the back, trying to avoid the ground units that are defending. And he will be able to, but that's not happening yet. Keep an eye on that. But right now, what's happening is... Well, MFB getting destroyed. That's good to get rid of the MFBs we never see. Mobile field base, they're useful repair units. We rarely see them in 1v1s, but I'm not surprised they're being used now just because of the amount of money that players can get. However, even with that, there's just too much anti-air in play, and unfortunately the Zion Church are too far back to actually help out, and it will be going down fairly soon. At the same time, we see that Wraith is attacking, he is going for the northeast, and there's no defensive units here for Tobacco. Tobacco hardly has any current energy either, I think he's going to move these back as soon as he gets the chance. Actually, he has the chance now, and he should. Why is he not moving these units back? What is he up to? He's not up to anything in his main base. This attack here is a lost cause. He's moving back. There we go. He has moved his defenders into place, and they should be able to take care of what's attacking him right now with the healing foundations. That will keep them alive long enough, but actually, no, even then, there's just... They just have to be out of range enough that the frigates are what's taking the damage, and the frigates do not matter in this fight. There are no areas that's what matters to the Tornads, and the Tornads are taking a lot of damage... Or talking no damage, I should say. They're taking a fair amount of damage from the foundations, but they're taking not enough damage to destroy them before they're able to harass out what exists. So one of the Tornads going down, and the foundations are... Looks like they are able to finally get rid of the units here. One of these Tornads still alive and just now taking damage from the foundations. The Blackbird, another healing unit, out of range, not able to heal this Tornad in time. And that is the end of that harassment. I think Wraith might be going back to try to fix that up. He is about half a minute down from when we were looking, but that's not enough regardless. I mean, he's trying to do what he can. This Blackbird just isn't in range to heal up what's there. The Heavy Cruiser is what's being healed right now, and even that isn't enough. Actually, no, it's not even being healed. The Blackbird isn't doing any healing at this point. 
So nothing is being healed up, but Tepeco is moving his units further into position while Ted Searcher comes up, and that will finish this all off. There's really not much it can do. The Frigate not focusing on the Ted Searcher, and the Tornado not well, focusing on the Zion Pulsar, but it doesn't really matter. This Ted Searcher will finish off everything. There's no healing left for any of Wraith's units, but there is much of healing from this foundation here for Tupeco. So Tupeco will have this fight. But at the same time, Oladin has this expansion. So Tupeco keeps his expansion secure, and... Well, okay, he loses a few RPs in the process. But he still keeps his expansion mostly secure. Wraith hasn't actually had his expansion contested yet. Oladin is not going for it. Oladin seems to be quite satisfied with the money he has. But he will be running out eventually. I mean, these, these crits are halfway done, so by about the 25 minute mark, I would expect, assuming the game goes on that long, I would expect that Oladin will start to get concerned. But even then, Oladin will probably want to get more money regardless, because he just, you always want more money. Because you always get, that gets more units and gets you just more powerful everything. And finally getting Mars, four Twin Mars. I don't think he had any other Twin Mars earlier. No, he did not. Or if he did, they did not last long, which is not like Twin Mars. So I assume he doesn't have any. Tupeco, like I said, able to defend pretty well. Wraith looks like he's trying to go for another attack. Actually getting Martanks this time, or a Martank. Could use another one. That's the only one he has, and that's not going to be enough on its own. But still, still going for it, and not able to do too much. These Teth Torchers anti-air units. You cannot... That's the thing, like I said. Tupeco is prepped for everything that Wraith might throw at him, because Tupeco has air units, and anti, more importantly, anti-air units, all nice and ready. There's nothing that Wraith can do with this air force of his. He needs to build some ground units. He needs to build some Twin Mars, and he needs to build possibly ATHCs or tanks. But he needs more ground units. He can't rely on air units anymore. And Oladin is in a similar situation, but Oladin at least does have a mixed force. He does have some ground units, and he was using those quite well in that last battle we saw with Tupeco. And Tupeco appears to be prepared for another battle as well, as well as heavy tanks coming up for for Oladin. So Oladin definitely getting himself prepped up, getting Twin Mars, getting heavy tanks, upgrading his units as best he can. Probably going to be going for a fight with Tupeco within a few minutes. While Tupeco and Wraith are going at it, well, to be more precise, Tupeco is pushing Wraith further and further away from his own main, from his expansion, back into Wraith's main base, and that is going quite well, actually. Well, fairly well. I mean, he his Ted Searcher did a pretty good job on that one. But, really, this Teth Halcyon should have been in place to help out. And really, to tank damage that the Teth Fear could do its job a bit longer. But even then, it's just... Everything's out of position for Wraith. Wraith really does not have his units set up for this. He is trying to be clever, and he is setting some units around the map to attack from vulnerable angles. And Wraith is actually attacking about 18 minute mark. He's dealing a fair amount of damage. Not and Well, actually, is able to deal enough. Able to overwhelm that Teth Torture. The Teth Halcyon, however, is going to be the big one, and... That will probably live long enough to just get rid of everything here. Though, no, it won't actually. It doesn't deal enough damage for that to matter. And the foundation to heal it has gone down, so this Teth Halcyon actually not enough. Tobacco will be losing this expansion. Wraith's assaults finally pay off with enough heavy cruisers. I suppose he can do anything. However, Tobacco did move some of his units back and kept his Teth Torture back, which means the second pass round. This attack is not working out. This. Well, once again, Tobacco has managed to secure his main base. Wraith did a good job, but really, sneaking around like that is only going to work if you're right next to the Implable Past Edge and your opponent cannot do anything about it. And Wraith was not in that position. His opponent could do something about it, and once again, he is not building any ground units. He really need, I, I'm harping on this because he needs them. He can't fight, you cannot fight Teth units with ground units, with air units, sorry. Because Teth units are dedicated anti-air, that's what they do. And whenever you kill one of the vehicles, a Teth Veer pops out, and the Teth Veer has the highest damage per second against air of any unit in the Vecchio army. The only reason they aren't overpowered is because they die so quickly, but if you can keep them alive, then you're great. However, Tepeco getting attacked very heavily by Oladin. This is where Tepeco's going to go down. Tepeco very quickly losing his main base to that Twin Mar, and there's no defensive units here. His secondary expansion able to hold out, but Tepeco actually not that not that full of units right now. He's got a few, and he does have Gate Tech as well, but he really doesn't have enough units to make it count, unfortunately for him, which means... I mean, he might be able to rebuild. He does have a fairly strong economy. He does have his main... Actually, his main base is starting to run out. In fact, that's the case for... Only for him. Oladin still has his, and Ray still has his, but it looks like Tupeco built a few more RPs around the same crates, which means he's... He's run out of a couple crates right now, and Temporal Assault and Shield, I believe, has been... No, it's not put on the heavy tank. I thought it was, but it, I was mistaken, because... 
there was no Chrono Porter in play. I don't know why I even thought that. It looked blue. It looked slightly bluer than it should have, which usually means that it's Temporal Assault and Shield, but it's not a flashing blue. That doesn't matter. The point is, Tupeco's main base has been destroyed at the 22 minute mark, and Tupeco at the 21 minute mark, holding off Wraith's forces, and this is where I think Wraith and Olin together are able to take out Tupeco. Tupeco, nice defensive play, but I think. But this is it. This is. Tupeco's has lost the game at this point. Wraith will be able to take out some of Oladin's forces if he's careful, but I think Oladin is going to win this match. I mean, Oladin has the heavy tank. That's his dedicated anti air right now, but if it dies. Actually, if it dies in this battle, he. Which it won't, never mind. The Zion Halcyon. Not able to focus on it. So this heavy tank should be able to stay alive long enough to fight off all of Wraith's air units. And Wraith's air units will be thinned out by Chepeko's anti-air. Even between the Bastions and everything, Chepeko's anti-air is still not quite powerful enough to deal with this. Well, between that and the fact that he has to deal with the main... I mean, if Oladin... If Oladin gets through to here, he's going to win. Wraith might be able to get through to here and win at this point. But the main thing is that even if Wraith doesn't win, Oladin will. Like, Tepeco basically doesn't have enough to fight off Oladin's forces as they come in and just rip apart his main base. So jumping over to the 23-minute mark, Tepeco sees his main base has been destroyed. From Oladin's point of view, further further up in the present, the 24-minute mark, or at the present, just at the 24-minute mark, he's he's taking out that base. Tepeco has losing is losing his expansion, and Oladin probably going to be taking this main base for himself, though there isn't a lot left to harvest from there. And the same with his expansion. Tupeco really did a number on that. Took a lot of resources from there. So Oladin not able to really get much out of that. He is going for Wraith's expansion, however, and Wraith looks like he is out of units. He is finally getting some ground units, but he is otherwise pretty much out of units, losing a lot of his air force, trying to take care of Tupeco's forces, and Tupeco back at the 22-minute mark. Actually, back at the 22-minute mark, he's building up a slipgate, and it looks like he's trying to chronoport some stuff back in order to get out of here. I don't anticipate he will, he will be able to do much with this. He might be lucky, might be able to get some units. He has some Teth Turtles being built up, and he's probably going to try to current port them back to deal with what's coming in. Which will be very interesting if it happens, but I don't think so. I think Tupeco's kind of out of this. Wraith, I should point out, Wraith actually has a lot of money in the bank. He needs more factories. He needs more factories and macrofabs, because he has way too much money and not enough being spent. I mean, he's queuing units. You should not queue units. Just in general in an RTS game, unless you're dealing with one with a Total Annihilation style streaming economy, like say 0k, you don't want to queue units. Because you are spending those resources in advance. Really would be better off as if you had like half a dozen factories and maybe two or three macrofabs and was just building all of these units from each of those individually. He'd have tons of units. He'd have at least three or four dozen units on the map right now if he did that. Tupeco... Well, he's out. Oladin... Same thing, actually. Olin is a slightly weaker economy, but same thing. He could be building extra factories. And Chronoport happening for Tupeco. There we go. He's waiting for that. And Olin only able to destroy the slipgate after the Chronoport happens, with, which means... Well, okay, it's going to be maybe a Teth Church that gets Chronoported back. But still, it's something. Yeah, it looks like one of these Teth Churches gets Chronoported back. Probably only one. Actually, even then, I'm not sure. Enough units coming in for... All in. No, it is going to survive long enough. That Teth Torture will be able to survive, and Chronoport, Tupeco, not able to do much with it, though. I don't think that'll actually help out a whole lot. Especially not against Olin's forces. Olin's forces are way too strong. Tupeco's out of this game. Nice attempt, really. I Valiant attempt with the Chronoporting. But not enough, unfortunately. That's really not going to help him out too much. And Wraith and Olin look like they might be going for a fight. No, go past each other. Wraith going instead for Olin's expansion and... Trying to take that out, while Oladin finishing off Tupeco and Wraith getting some attack, getting some south expansion attacked a fair amount, but Oladin is, like I said, still in a stronger position, though it's just a matter of Wraith not building enough factories and macrofabs. He has the importers, he has the resource processors, he definitely has the money in the bank, but he has gotten nothing else. He can even get gate tech right now, actually, that might be a terrible idea. He is getting specials, I'm really not sure why. He's... He doesn't have any units that actually make use of them. Heavy Tank is but the only one you care about. Heavy Tank or Chrono Porter, he doesn't have Gate Tech to use the Temporal Salt and Shield with the Chrono Porter. So he's got nothing. Yeah, actually, I should point out that Olin doesn't even have Gate Tech. I don't know why I thought temp Temporal Salt and Shield. That was silly. That'd be extremely useful. But that's not what's happening here. Actually, it wouldn't be useful now. Wraith has too many Lancers that have used the Lancers being the Shield Breaking Unit. And Wraith's army, as we see at the 25 minute... Or 26 minute mark or so. We're at the 25 minute mark now, but at the 26 minute mark, they all die... 
But let's see if Wraith can change this up. I don't think he will, though. Going for the defense. Taking on one of the Tornads very quickly. But he still has a much larger army to contend with. And the ground army is the real threat. Actually, Tupeco has not... He's not completely out for the count. Actually, he's staying in. Surprisingly enough, I think Wraith having to come in just in time for Tupeco not to die. Although Wraith losing a lot of units in the process. But this is giving Tupeco a second chance. And... Now, with some Chronoboard back Teth Turchers and Teth Halcyons, he's going to be able to hold off whatever Wraith sends if Wraith does send any more units. But right now, Oladin and Wraith are much more concerned with each other than they are about finishing off Tupeko, so Tupeko, he has a comeback chance. Or at least he's got a comeback chance chance. He has a chance at a comeback chance. He still has to actually make that payoff, and it's really a matter of if Wraith and Oladin finish each other off and Wraith doesn't wise up and build more factories. But... Really, at this point, Tupeco trying to do what he can, just observing the unplayable pass, seeing if anything changes. And some stuff will change a little bit, but Oladin still was going for a powerful attack back in the past. And right up again at the 26 minute mark, Oladin once again going for an attack and going for a very strong attack, getting rid of Wraith's south expansion and his central expansion as well. Wraith has a lot of units in his base, building up a larger army once again to try to just push through and finish off Oladin's forces. And Oladin able to use the money he has, or at least not getting too much money that he can't use it. And getting gate tech as well, I think Oladin has this in the bag. Getting a Chronoporter up from here, or even a Teleporter up from here, will finish it off. Because he is finishing off Tupeco. Even with Chronoporting, I think Tupeco's out of this. That was, like I said, a comeback chance, chance. But Oladin decided he wanted to take care of Tupeco. He decided, you know what, why am I leaving this guy alone? He's almost dead, but almost dead means he can still kill me. Completely dead means I might win. But at this point, going for Wraith, having finished off Tupeco, I mean, Tupeco might still have... A small chance? I don't think he does. No, he does not. There, Yeah, there's really nothing he can do. The green timer will tell us the truth, however, but I don't think he has a chance. On the other hand, Wraith does have a bit of a chance. A small one, but between the defense turrets and the fact that he's right next to his home, and he does have all these Martanks, why is he not using these Martanks? Why is he not moving them forward? This is exactly what he needs to do, is move these Martanks in and deal with all these ground units here. Just tear them to shreds. Why is he not doing that? This is extremely important. I don't know what he is thinking. Alden, on the other hand, just coming in and muscling through everything, changing his tactics, and able to get through that defense turret without issue this time around, and able to get through the Tormors as well, so it actually doesn't really matter. Wraith not even able to move himself around to deal with this, and Wraith is further in the past, too. Wraith actually has moved his Martanks in. That's good. He's getting a Twin Mar as well, and, but we just saw how this panned out, and although Wraith, from his point of view, thinks it works out. Alden, from his point of view, so both players think that they've won. I think it's just that Oladin had changed up his... Yeah, this is what happened. Oladin changed up his tactics, so Wraith has a bit more time to build up. Oladin hasn't actually attacked the 28-minute mark in this iteration. He's waited, he's finished out Tupeco, and now finally gone back. <clears throat> and as you see in the green time of the Slipgate is the last thing left. Slipgate in repel mode, but it's going down. And once it does, Tupeco has lost this game. Now, on the other hand, Wraith, I think, is also going down. At this time, Oladin... Having a very powerful attack, coming in an off angle, Wraith not prepared to defend from this angle, and losing all of his RPs, however, these RPs would have very soon been useless, right before they run out of resources to harvest, but still, he could have moved them, he could have teleported them, wouldn't have been a bad thing to have, and in the main base, I don't see any Chronoporters or Teleporters being built up yet. Gate Tech not being made use of, not that it matters, I think Oladin has this game, but it would help. Every bit helps. Wraith and Oladin are still kind of even, and Wraith does have a lot of money in the bank. Really, if Oladin gets rid of the production structures, there's really nothing that can be done. But those Macrofabs with the Thousand Health, that's not trivial to get rid of. However, with the Pincer Assault going on here, Oladin has the game. Oladin has won. There's nothing that Wraith can do at this point. Wraith has jumped back about two minutes. I don't think he can really do much from here, though. Actually, two minutes ago, Oladin striking even harder at the 29-minute mark than it was the 31-minute mark, and that is basically finishing this off. There's not, there's nothing that Wraith can do. Wraith has lost this game. Oladin has won. Wraith does have a mech down here trying to, I guess, rebuild. But there's no time to do that. I mean, he has the money for it, but he'd need to build five or six factories and just pump out units. If he did that, I think, I don't think he can build them on the side here. But if he did build fa all these units, he might actually have it, he might actually pull it off, when I think of it. No, I cannot show how the units would be built. But, that's a real stretch. And Tupeco has surrendered. As you can see, he's surrendered. He's lost. He is out. Oladin, on the other hand, is... Well, he's not quite won yet. Wraith has not quite surrendered yet, but he is closing in on Wraith's last outpost. And really, it's just a matter of time. Actually, it's a matter of 
It's not even looking like that for Wraith. Wraith actually, being further in the past means he's not even seeing the attack happen until well after it's happening. A minute after it happens, it'll end up propagating back and you'll see it. Actually, Wraith's in slow-mo, so it'll take a couple minutes before he sees that. But he's not actually doing anything with what he has. So I don't see anything coming out of this. This is this game is done. Oladin has this game. You see the 3-2 minute mark? He has this game, definitely. And Wraith... Well, he doesn't see it yet. He should be surrendering any second now, pretty much. So I... If he doesn't surrender, he's definitely lost. I hope he does surrender, but honestly, it doesn't matter. There's nothing he can do. He's he is out of this game. Olinen is one, and that is the game. So I hope you enjoyed that. Chaotic though it may have been. There we go. Wraith has surrendered. Olinen won. Well done, Olinen. So if you enjoyed that, a little bit long, a little bit chaotic, but kind of wanted to show a. Three for all, every once in a while. You never get to see some of these maps. Like Abrams, no one plays Abrams in 1v1 for good reason. It's actually really huge for 1v1. But, I want to show that off, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll be back shortly with another cast, a two-player match this time. So stay tuned.